How's it going everyone? Maximilian here, and this is going to be a video demonstration showing the usefulness and effectiveness of the newer Support Strike Package Killstreaks in Modern Warfare 3. The Support Strike Package Killstreaks differ from the Assault because they do not stack. The majority of these killstreaks are designed to aid your team and not directly get you kills. But the best part about it is that dying will not reset your kill streak, and progressing to your next goal is much easier. But let's move on to the breakdown. We're not going to cover some of the old kill streaks, as many of them are similar to previous games, but more specifically, the effect of the new ones. And the first one is going to be the Ballistic Vest. The Ballistic Vest takes 5 kills and is definitely one of the more useful from the Support Strike package. Upon gaining this kill streak, you'll set down a pile of vests in one specific location. You and multiple team members can pick up the ballistic vests and you'll receive a temporary health boost until you die. But the vests won't last forever and will quickly fade out, so if you see that heart icon on the map, grab yours quickly because they're going to go fast. Up next at 8 required kills is the SAM turret, but sadly enough, it's not nearly effective as its counterpart in Black Ops. The SAM turret in Modern Warfare 3 shoots several rockets designed to take out aerial killstreaks. But the issue is, is that these rockets don't do much damage by themselves, and it can even take multiple shots from a single SAM turret to take something as small as a UAV down. It still gets the job done, but they're easy to pinpoint on the minimap, and if an enemy takes it out, it's an easy point streak for them. I personally recommend running Stingers if you're planning on using a class that's designed to take down aerial support. The Stingers are the most effective and quickest way for shooting down choppers, UAVs, and even more damaging killstreaks like the AC-130 or the Osprey Gunner. Up next at 10 kills is one of the more fun to operate killstreaks in the entire game, and it's the Recon Drone. The Recon Drone is a miniature chopper that you manually operate as it hovers around the map, painting targets that'll show up on the minimap. The painted targets will remain until they die, and upon death you'll be receiving assist points for everyone you painted. But sadly, even with Hardline Pro, these assists do not go towards later killstreaks. It can be extremely helpful for your team, but it can be shot down fairly easily taking about 10 to 15 direct hits. And during this entire time, you'll still be stuck in the laptop operating the chopper, so it leaves you at a very big disadvantage. Up next is one of the more effective and useful of the Support Strike packages, and at 12 kills, it's the Advanced UAV. While it shares similarities with its Blackbird counterpart in Black Ops, the Advanced UAV performs much differently. Instead of constantly seeing every target on the minimap, you'll be forced to wait a cycle period to see those targets similar to the regular UAV, but the best part is that the direction of your opponents will now be showing. But the Advanced UAV also shares another similarity with the regular UAV, and it's that it can be shot out of the sky. Even though select perks like Assassin negate the effect of this killstreak, it still can be very effective while it's in use. Our next killstreak also requires 12 kills, and it's the Remote Sentry. The Remote Sentry is a similar but immobile version of the Assault Drone in the Assault Strike Package killstreaks. Once you receive the Remote Sentry, you'll have to specify one location to put the Sentry down and then you operate it from a laptop. But luckily, you don't have to man that Sentry turret in that specific spot. You can actually go to a different location and pull out the laptop far away from danger. Similar to the Assault Drone, the Remote Sentry's main weapon is a low damage machine gun. But it can be great because it can move 360 degrees and you don't have to reload. But due to the low damage output of the machine gun, it can take an abundance of shots to finally put an enemy down. Which makes this killstreak very situational and only good for high density choke points. Up next at 14 required kills is the Stealth Bomber. The Stealth Bomber is very similar to its counterpart in Modern Warfare 2. You paint a select target on the minimap, specify the direction, and it quickly brings a wave of destruction that'll kill almost anything in its path. Unlike the majority of support killstreaks, the Stealth Bomber is one of the most effective at getting kills, but due to the amount of buildings and hiding areas in this game, you have to be very cautious about the position you select. The next 18 kill required support killstreak is the Juggernaut Recon. Similar to the Assault version, once you receive the necessary amount of kills, you call in this Juggernaut armor via a care package. But this time, you're given a Riot Shield and a USP handgun as a secondary. The support version of this killstreak is almost as effective as the Assault. Both have the same amount of health, but you're allowed to go into defense mode by putting up your Riot Shield. With certain weapons, Juggernauts can go down very fast. 
but the support version gives you a much greater amount of protection while sacrificing your offensive capabilities. Juggernaut armor has nearly 1,000 health and it can be recovered, so going gung-ho into a firefight might not be the best way to go. And if you stay conservative, you'll find yourself living much longer. The final 18 kill required kill streak is the Escort Airdrop. The Escort Airdrop shares a heavy similarity to that of the Emergency Airdrop in Modern Warfare 2. It takes about three Stinger missiles to take one of these guys down, and it'll float down into the map after some time, dropping four active care packages and a fifth one that's booby-trapped. If the Escort Airdrop has not been shot down after it's dropped its care packages, it will automatically defend all of the crates it's dropped by shooting any nearby opponents that get close to it. The Escort Airdrop can be extremely deadly on small maps, but it's very easy to shoot out of the sky if you have proactive opponents that like to take down air support. Thanks very much for watching the Support Killstreaks Breakdown. If you'd like to see a similar breakdown video for the Assault versions of these Killstreaks, please check in the description below. Or, if you'd like to see several future breakdown videos covering weapons or maps, I encourage you to leave a comment. This has been Maximilian, signing out.